Well, welcome to Espresso Corner. This is uh, the, the part of the teaching room that shows most activity during one of our courses. And uh, this week, Luca and I uh, came across a really nice, interesting case uh, in clinic. And uh, this is it. So this is an upper uh, left six that came across into my clinic. And what we're going to look at today is, you know, why is this a complicated curvature? And what file, what features of the file are mm. we going to choose to deal with a complicated case? Um, so I'll, I'll kick this right to you. I know we can see there's caries there, the restoration. We're going to strip all that out. Yeah, right, that's a given. But why is this a complicated curvature? Yeah, it got us talking um, in this case. And I think that the first thing that strikes us in terms of curvature is that mesial root. Uh, this is just a two-dimensional picture, but we also take uh, cone beam CT scans for all of our upper motors. And that gives us an even more of an idea of the curvature of that mesial root. Mm -hmm. And it's quite a high degree of curvature, but also what's quite key here is where it is in the root. And it's not that Hollywood kink at the tip of the tooth. It's actually mid-root, so you've got a long radius of curvature. And if you have a long radius of curvature, especially middle of the root, it's putting an awful lot of, of strain on the instrument in this thicker part. Mm -hmm. So I think that is more conclusive to a, a, an instrument possibly failing or breaking, or maybe more dentin being stripped because you're putting an awful lot of pressure in a delicate part of the of the of the instrument. So I think that's this is certainly a, a tooth that you saw, and I remember we sat down and we went, "Well, this is going to be an interesting uh, interesting case." <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, it's that kind of conundrum, isn't it, between um, taking enough tooth structure away yeah. to make your life a little bit easier and mitigate some of that fracture risk that you're talking about and trying to preserve as much tooth as you can because this is clearly a broken down tooth. Mm. So every bit of tooth structure we can retain is going to uh, weaken the tooth less in terms of a restorative um, kind of outcome longer term. Mm. And it, it's quite interesting what you're saying, that, that enhanced cyclical fatigue on the files, that enhanced torsional fatigue on the file is really important. So... You know, what sort of things are we looking for in a file system, if you like, yeah. uh, to tackle a case like this? I think there's a couple. Um, nowadays, I think with the file technology that we have, I would look for something that's heat treated. Yep. Um, something that it doesn't have a big uh, maximum file diameter because you said it's quite a broken down tooth. So I want something that makes space but doesn't strip the tooth of dentine further up. Um, we still want to create some form of shape apicry to irrigate, to obturate. Um, I'd want, certainly I'd want a variable taper instrument here. Mm -hmm. So something that's not constantly getting bigger. And I think in these cases, because otherwise the, the instrument is working quite hard, you can still achieve um, a shape with uh, constant taper instruments, but I think it becomes a little bit more difficult and you might sacrifice more dentine. Yeah, I agree. I, I tell you, and, and actually for simplicity of shaping, you have to do an awful lot of juggling with constant taper crown down. It's, it's, it's a, you've got to have a very good tactile feel yeah. if you're using a file like that. Um, when you say, so I meant uh, picking up on heat treatment there, uh -huh. obviously we've got different types of nickel titanium that are produced with heat treatment. What, what type of nickel titanium are you specifically looking for here? It's something that has a shape of memory mm -hmm. where, uh, or control memory, where if you put a bend on it, it will keep that shape. Uh, it means it's a softer metal, so it will follow the anatomy. We, we've seen enough data now to, to show us that that type of heat-treated nickel titanium maintains the anatomy a little bit more. It has less restoring forces. Certainly in this case, it will want to straighten. So I think having less restoring force will, will help you down there. And yeah. What, what did you use in... What did you choose in this case? What were your options? So I, I chose, uh, if we look, actually, we can get, jump to the uh, post-op here. Yeah. Um, the mesia buckle, obviously, is the challenge. As you can see, it had quite a significant mm. curvature on it. Um, so I chose a, a combination of things. So I did a little bit of hand glide path to start with, yeah. uh, just so I could get an understanding of what the canal was going to give me, what the curvature was like. And I did a little bit of brushing out. I used the true anatomy system here, so the orifice modifier. Uh, which is the orifice opener, you can see that slightly higher funnel shape. If you compare it to the distal buckle, mm. for example, so I've accepted here that, that uh, there needs to be a bit of a trade-off. Yeah. So I have brushed out a little Where bit. Where did you brush? As I brushed away from the fication, yeah. so measly here. Um, so open with that, and then a bit of hand-filing C-pilot files, 
and I've used the purple path file, yes, which is a 1302, to bridge the gap between my size 10 and the True Anatomy glider, which is a size 1702 variable taper. If the preparation here was finished with a 2604 variable taper, and that's the True Anatomy Prime. So, I mean, I'm getting a size 25 around that curvature, yeah. and I think there's no way I'd be taking something like an F2 around that. Yeah. Um, you know, wave one, I think with the reciprocating movement, maybe you could just about be doing it, but I think you'd be taking a lot of dentine yeah. on that mesial aspect. I think you can. You can take those instruments around, but it's it's a compromise of mm. what you want to take around and what you're sacrificing. If you're saying yes to taking around bigger instruments, what are you saying no to further up, which is dentine and probably weakening the tooth further. And I think to go back on instruments that we choose, variable taper certainly is our preference here, but also um, things that are machined in an offset way, which yeah. means that uh, you only have one to two <coughs> contact points along the instrument as you go up. And that, that probably gives you a feeling of less, be, less sucked in, being yeah. less sucked in. And not only that, but there's less torsional fatigue going on on, on the file. Um, so I think those are key for us in, in these uh, slightly longish and very curved curved uh, roots. I quite like using uh, controlled memory files here as well because, I, you know, just to bring you into what happened on this case. So uh, the size 10, the 1302 were no problem. Then I went with the 1702 glider. Uh -huh. As I was getting into that apical two, three millimeters, I got unwinding of the file because it's working so, so hard. Yeah. But actually, you can bring it out and you see that unwinding. So often you see mm. it's unwound before it's broken. Yes. So when the file comes out, inspect, you get that little flash of light on the yeah. file, discard, and go again. And I appreciate, you know, I got through uh, two gliders uh, and I got through two prime bars on this yeah. because it was such hard work. And I, I just had the fear that I was going to break something because it is a really high tariff case. It's about as high tariff curvature as we have to deal with. Them. Yes, absolutely. It's a very nice result, John. Well done. Thank you. Well, hopefully that's been uh, a useful insight into a little bit of our thought process with the uh, curvature management here. And uh, if you've got any other topics you'd like us to discuss, just drop a, a note in the comments below. Cheers for now. Thank you.